Okay, you're on. Well, okay. I'm David Schwinn with White Sand. Um, we have been given a uh, project to test and evaluate a scanner, a sensor to be used in perimeter detection systems. This is the uh, SICK LMS 511 Pro. It uh, creates a two-dimensional uh, laser wall that can go out uh, and snag a black object at 120 feet from the center, either side, both sides, and as much as 240 feet for a white object. Uh, the unit is going to be used on a perimeter security system that will detect activity coming up to and crossing its path. So imagine and visualize a wall, a two-dimensional wall. The wall is going to be uh, the height of whatever the sensor will be and up and out to at least 120 feet either side of the sensor. <laughs> now this, this ladder is just a standard uh, Warner ladder. We had to have a mast made uh, uh, in order to support the 30-pound uh, package, the labor, which is just to uh, ensure that we have enough uh, protection for the load. We came up with the mast. The mast itself, the aluminum, had to be found that could uh, channel into each other. Uh, the top of the mast, uh, the arm part, was actually uh, welded. I had a fabricator come through. Love the, love the, the, uh, the unit itself, uh, you communicate with the unit and set it up through Ethernet. The output of the unit sends six discrete uh, contacts, uh, TTL, transistor, transistor logic type contacts. So I have Neil inside who is uh, right now configuring this sensor to six individual zones. What you'll find out as we go through this is that these zones actually will uh, trigger lights so that we can show the client, show the customer, that when you break this virtual wall, this invisible wall, that it, the light comes on. And we will then be able to test the unit to see exactly what, how we can make it fail. Because part of any uh, good security system is understanding that every sensor, every detector, every design has failure. How it fails, where it fails, is what we're going to need. Okay, so this is my brother Jimmy. What he's going to do, just for demonstration purposes, is he's going to walk the zones that have been um, just set up for this demonstration. The zones are set on, what, 12 foot? They're set up on 12 foot um, increments. increments. What we have in the uh, background, uh, there is a light tower. And the light tower will actually, as Jimmy's going through the zones, you'll actually see the lights come on. So here we are, we just trip zone one. He's in zone one. He's going to cross into zone two, which you can't see uh, very well. It's blue. Here's zone three, which is green. Zone 4, I believe, is yellow. Zone 5, I believe, is orange. And then Zone 6 is red. So there you go. You can see that this can go out. This is that from, from center, from center, and you can come on over, Squid. From center of the mass right now, out this way, are five 12-foot zones. There's a 12-foot zone on the opposite side. So that's 60 feet that you just saw pass. Um, and he triggered each one. In zone six, he's walking through zone six. I'm going to change the view to zone five. Nothing. He just hit zone five. Now that turn. Zone four. He just hit zone four. Four. Now he's yellow. This is actually him walking through there. The blue line representing him walking through. Switch to zone three. 
green. Now you just enter zone three and turn to yellow. So here he is walking through zone three. Switch it to two. He's in two now. Zone one. Now he's in zone one. We can see him walking through zone one right there. Cool. Now he's out of zone one. So now he's walking back again. There's one, two. Okay, so as he's walking down, he's tripping zone one, as you can see, relay one. He's now just hit zone two, relay two. Zone three, relay three. Zone four, relay four. Zone five, relay five. And zone six. So what happens is the contact closures, the TTLs that we discussed earlier, come from the sensor into the coil side of the relay. It triggers. When it triggers, it's a double pole, double throw relay. One end goes to the light tower. The other end is going to go back through this connector to a control center. So the control center will see these mirrored outputs. This is simply for uh, setup and configuration and testing. This is to interface to and integrate to other security devices we're using for uh, this project. It outputs both uh, 12 and 24 volts DC. 120 to 240 can come in on this side for a standard uh, uh, connector. And I, I would show you that connector. This is the charger. Feeds out to these batteries. The charge time um, from drain to full, it's probably about eight hours. It's a slow charge, but the batteries are made for deep cycling. At White Sand, the intermediate phase design engineering component selection, assembling and field trial efforts are typically a hand-in-hand -hand validating process. Installing new or cutting over existing systems can be complex and stressful. To reduce the strain on installation personnel, great efforts are made to provide near photorealistic drawings and details of these components, the cable systems, and the terminations. These same or similar drawings are used later in the project life cycle to facilitate system servicing. The Lovato light tower is used to confirm scanner setup. The tower also allows both the technician and the client to real-time validate alarm zone activations. These are some of the white sand documents and details that are typically provided to the client or directly to their contractor of choice. The bills of material the recommended tooling, assembly and fabrication details, elevation and termination details. The portable low voltage power assembly in this application, the power assembly or power pack, is only expected to be used for the initial sensor placement and configuration setup. However, because the pack outputs both 12 volts and 24 volts DC, it may be used in the future to support other site requirements. Here are some of the power assembly documents and details that were produced by White Sand for this project. Bills of material, recommended tooling, assembly and fabrication drawings, elevation and termination details. The secondary signal power enclosure holds the secondary signal power distribution low voltage panel. This is a project specific design that, when installed, will input 28 volts AC from a remote source and output 24 volts DC to the SIX scanner. The panel is also the interface between the scanner and the Lovato light tower, as well as the head end processing equipment. Again, here are some of the documents and details that were produced by White Sand to support this installation. The bills of material for this panel are more extensive and specific due to the number of connector jacks and sub-assemblies. 
Each jack or plug location and subassembly is given its own bill of materials. Here's the recommended tooling, assembly and fabrication details, elevation and termination details. The SIC laser scanner is an IP67 weatherproof device and for this project has been configured to utilize six of the possible ten sensor alarm outputs. These outputs feed to the secondary signal power panel that eventually will report back to the head end signal processing equipment over fiber strands. Even though much, if not most, of the data is provided by the manufacturer, manufacturers often include data from their other or similar assemblies which can make navigating their documents cumbersome. This extraneous information may be confusing to the technician, time consuming to wade through, and even be unwarranted when given the purpose for which the device is being installed. White Sand remains committed to providing the data and details needed by installation, service, maintenance, and operator user personnel so that they can competently perform their jobs. Our experience confirms that proper upfront design and engineering reduces the overall project cost and resulting schedule impacts. The vetted white sand final design and documents are typically turned over to the client and are included in the RFP. The site security plan and used to conduct quality control and inspection during the installation phase. The WSS documents are used by contract personnel to confirm that services have been sufficiently rendered. There are times when the drawing and document sets are handed in part or whole directly to the contractor of choice for ordering, installing, and commissioning the upgrade. Thank you for listening. If White Sand can be of support to you and your organization now or in the near future, do not hesitate to call or email. All the best.